The Story of the Kimono Sleeves by Cody Allingham The slender figure of Rampe slowly fisted as he inspected the thimble of Katsutori set before him on the counter. The lone paper light above the bar was dim and ratty, and the old place had seen better nights than this. The heat of the evening seeped in through the pores of the wooden house and brought with it the perfumed scent of the stream that gently flowed outside. The owner's young wife fanned herself with a silk piece of aristocracy that Rempe had forfeited in lieu of payment the previous week. The fan had three gold petals embroidered on a pink background with a frame of cherry wood that matched her kimono. With each movement of her arms, the wide sleeves of her summer kimono fluttered to life like the soft velvet wings of a butterfly. Do you know why the sleeves of kimono are so wide? Rempe asked across the counter. When placed on a bamboo hanger, the Japanese kimono has the wide form of the English letter T. The sleeves, known as sode, double in length after the elbow to create large, billowing pockets. The woman looked at Rempe then inspected her own kimono, like a baby discovering the fascination of its hands for the first time. What do you mean? she replied. Rempe was dangerously charming, a crime in those days. Why don't you come over here and I will tell you the story, he proposed. The bar was deserted and the owner had taken the chance to go on some errand just a few moments earlier. She gingerly made her way around to the seat beside him and thus he began to recite the story. A long time ago, there was a very beautiful woman. You would know if you saw her, Rempe smiled, trying to work up an eloquence. Her skin was like the finest china, locked away in the keep and never used. Her hair was blacker than a poet's ink on a moonless night, a single form drawn by the master craftsman from an eternity practicing his steady hand. But it was perhaps her lips that were the most delicate detail of all. The careful dashes of carnation brought the doll to life. The grand mansion of her family was surrounded by tall walls, which hid her away from the outside world. For many years she never even ventured beyond the garden. It was there that she learned the secrets of the world from afar, like a cartographer studying the form of a valley or a mountain range with nothing but a distant glimpse through a window. When she came of age, she occasionally began to leave the protectorate of the mansion. At first, her feet did not even have a chance to touch the ground outside the gate before she was whisked away by porters. But as she began to experience this new world, she began to wander further on foot, always with her chaperone by her side, of course. She learned of the outside world in a playful kind of way, never completely of it. There was no doubt that she was the most beautiful girl around. The sight of such a being amongst the streets of mortals began to draw a string of courtiers from far away who sought to blind themselves. The fact that she was, for the most part, locked away made her all the more appealing. Rempe poured both of them another shot. The courtiers, all completely love-struck, wrote letters to her in their best hand paper was not cheap then you see and only the finest parchment would suffice of course in those days to speak to her directly would be unforgivable so the men instead passed their letters to her chaperone who would then hand them over to her each man in his brazen pride would think he was the first to write her as if she had always been waiting to receive only his letter the man would inevitably make his leave pondering over his choice of characters in the letter, and as time went by, with no reply, began to doubt his writing altogether. The truth was that she received many such letters each time she left the mansion. However, it would be unfathomable to toy with a man's best efforts by carrying them openly, and so she tried her best to conceal all the letters on her person, but there were simply too many. At last, she had a new kimono made with special wide sleeves that turned into billowing pockets so that she could tuck away the letters in the fold with only the slightest flick of her wrist. Her quarters continued to follow after and give their words in earnest, and the woman continued to receive each one via her chaperone with utmost sincerity and a sublime smile. For a brief moment each man held the belief that he was the first, 
and perhaps the last to write to her. And with that, Rempo's story of where the kimono sleeves came from was told. The faint sound of the stream through the thin walls of the house seemed like an illusion, promising something more than the smouldering emptiness of the outside world. If only fate itself was as subtle as the young lady in the story, Rempe thought, slipping away the fortunes of men into her sleeve with nothing but the slightest motion of her hand and a sublime smile. <laughs>